Hello, this is Yashwin. In this video, I'll be solving specimen paper 2 from 2022-9700 biology. 1. Figure 1 1.1 is an electron micrograph of a part of a eukaryotic cell. A. State how it is possible to deduce that figure 1.1 is a transmission electron micrograph and not a scanning electron micrograph. This structure over here is a mitochondrion and so is this one. And if you look closely, closely at the structure, you'd be able to see internal details like crustae in the um, mitochondria, which can only possibly be observed using a transmission electron micrograph. And so that would be my answer over here. B, both Golgi body and rough endoplasmic reticulum are part of the network of membranes inside cells. Outline structural features shown in figure 1.1 that identify G as Golga body and not the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So G over here is this structure which you can see has fluid fill sac stacked upon one another, which is the description of Golga body. And also rough endoplasmic reticulum is associated with ribosomes, which clearly are not visible on a structure G. So this is a Golga body. C. Calculate the actual diameter xy of the mitochondrion labeled in figure 1.1. Write down the formula that you'll use to make your calculation and give your answer to the nearest whole nanometer. The formula you'd use is um, actual size is equal to image size over magnification. Image size should be somewhere around 10 millimeters. This line over here, xy or 1 centimeter. And as 1 millimeter is equal to 10 to the power of 6 nanometers that would mean 10 millimeters would be 10 to the power of 7 nanometers and that would be my image size divided by the magnification which is 47,000 would give the answer as 212.766 and rounding that to the nearest whole nanometer the answer I'd uh, write down is 213 nanometers. D. Many of the cell structures in figure 1.1 are surrounded by membranes. Membranes are approximately 6 nanometer to 7 nanometer wide. One, describe the fluid mosaic model of membrane structure, and there is a space below for your diagram. For the uh, description of fluid mosaic, you describe how the interior or the core of the membrane is made up of fatty acid core and it's got proteins that are able to move and because this question is of three marks you'd also mention one more key term describing the membrane as phospholipid bilayer two the inner membrane of the mitochondrial envelope is less permeable than the outer membrane suggest so one way in which the structure of inner membrane of the mitochondrion may differ from that of the outer membrane to produce a less permeable inner membrane. Depending on the nature of a substance, its transport or its movement is uh, dependent on either transport proteins or phospholipids. So hydro hydrophilic or polar substances would be transported by transport proteins, whereas uh, non-polar substances would be transported by phospholipids. Change in either of these can cause a decrease in permeability and so in case of transport proteins if the membrane becomes less permeable to hydrophilic substances that would mean there are fewer transport proteins and if the membrane becomes less permeable to hydrophobic substances that would mean the phospholipids have a closer packaging due to the fatty acids acids being saturated or having no carbon carbon double bond if you write down your answer in terms of proteins, you need to write down that there are only few types of transport proteins and it is essential that you write the term types because there might be many proteins of the same type and that would mean they are only capable of transporting one type of substance that would still make the membrane less permeable as it would not be capable of transporting different types of substances. Two, the main cause of tuberculosis in humans is the bacterium myto mycobacterium tuberculosis. Most cases of the disease involve the lungs. The bacterium can enter cells and remain inactive in a dormant state. However, the bacterium can become active to produce symptoms of the disease. 
In a person with active TB, the pathogen can be, be present in airborne droplets that are exhaled. Generally, a person, uh, a healthy person who inhales these droplets has effective defense mechanisms in the gas exchange system to prevent infection. A one example of a defense mechanism against pathogens in the gas exchange system involves the action of macrophages. One, describe the mode of action of macrophage against a bacterial cell. What macrophages do is they recognize antigens on the pathogen as being foreign and they engulf these pathogens due to their antigens by phagocytosis and they form a phagocytic vesicle which then fuses with the lysosomes present in the macrophages and the uh, digestive enzymes in lysosomes are released to digest the contents of this um, phagocytic vesicle. Two, sometimes M. tuberculosis survives within a macrophage instead of being destroyed by the macrophage. So just one way in which M. tuberculosis may survive within a macrophage. So in this case, because the pathogen is a bacteria, here you can use reasons similar to that of resistance developing to antibiotics as it also involves enzyme activity to perform its function like macrophages do. And... So the enzyme activity can be sabotaged by enzyme inhibitors that make the digestive enzymes from lysosomes ineffective and therefore prevent the macrophage destroying the bacteria. B. A healthy person has other defense mechanisms in the gas exchange system to prevent bacteria entering cells. Describe these defense mechanisms and explain how bacteria in inhaled air are prevented from entering cells of gas exchange system. In the gas ex exchange system, the airways are lined with ciliated epithelium, which consists of goblet cells, mucous glands, and cilia. So the job of goblet cells or mucous glands is to secrete mucus, which traps pathogen, which is then moved away from the gas exchange surface by the swooping motion of cilia. And that is how they are prevented from entering the cells of the gas exchange system. See, in people with a weakened immune system, M. tuberculosis can affect other organs and tissues such as the kidneys and joints. So just how the bacteria may spread from the lungs to other organs and tissues. The bacteria may spread using the person's own transport systems, which include lymphatic system and the circulatory system. So it would use lymph or blood plasma. And if, you're, if you do write down blood plasma, make sure you do not write red blood cells in your answer because that would mean... Uh, bacteria having a binding site in red blood cells which they do not so you need to be careful about that the tb in humans can be caused by another species of bacterium m bovis state the mode of transmission of this pathogen to humans this could be due to drinking unpasteurized milk or eating meat of an animal that is infected with the species Rifampicin is one antibiotic that can be used to kill mycobacterial cells. Although rifampicin is very effective at killing mycobacterial cells, it is often the first antibiotic to which resistance develops. Rifampicin binds to a section of RNA polymerase that has attached to DNA template strand. Explain how binding to RNA polymerase allows rifampicin to kill my mycobacterial cells. RNA polymerase attaches to DNA templates when uh, and it's supposed to build RNA, mRNA during transcription process. And if rifampicin affects that process, that means rifampicin prevents, does something that prevents transcription or the synthesis of mRNA, which in turn means that rifampicin inhibits the protein synthesis. And if protein is not synthesized, that would mean metabolism is affected as well and that could eventually lead to a cell's death. The standard treatment for TB continues for six months. Initially, four antibiotics are prescribed. Then it is reduced to two of the four antibiotics, which are rifampicin and isoniazid, if the person responds to treatment. A person with multidrug resistant TB, or MDR-TB for short, does not respond to treatment with rifampicin and isoniazid. The treatment for MDR-TB involves other antibiotics and can last for up to 30 months. 
Table 2.1 shows the number of reported cases of TB and MDR-TB in Southeast Asia, Asia region between 2005 and 2014 as published by the World Health Organization. Table 2.1 shows that between 2000 and 2014, there is an overall increase in the total number of reported cases for both TB and MDR-TB. F. Describe the difference between differences between the trends in the total number of reported cases for TB and the trend in to total number of reported cases of MDR-TB as shown in Table 2.1. So the general trend is increase in number increase in number of cases of both. And to find out the differences, you'd need to take a closer look at the data in the table. And doing so, you'd be able to see that. While there is a general increase in number of cases of TB reported, um, the number of cases decreased from 2011 to 2013 from 2,358,000 to 297,000. Um, that, that would be the first difference from the general trend, whereas the number of cases of MDR TB reported still increase. And the second difference that you'd also be able to see is that the number of MDR TB increases at a much greater rate than the number of cases of TB. G. Many social and economical factors need to be considered in the prevention of control of MDR TB. Outline three of these factors. For the prevention, I'd mention social factors and I'd be using economical factors in control of MDR-TB. Because to prevent MDR-TB, you'd need to break down the transmission cycle, which falls under the category of social factors. And if the bacteria does evolve resistance to multiple antibiotics, then you need to take some, some steps to control it, and that would involve economical factors. So starting off my answer with social factors, you need to break down the transmission cycle of MDR-TB. And you could do that by educating people about ways of antibiotic resistance arising in the first place. Also avoid using antibiotics for animals which are going to be eaten by a population because using antibiotics increases the chance of resistance which could then spread to anyone who ate the meat. And as for the economical factors, if MDR-TB does spread, that means the older antibiotics would be ineffective. So new antibiotics would have to be developed and they would have their own costs. The unicellular fungus Cleuromyces lactis is found in dairy products. It is a safe microorganism to culture for the extraction of enzyme lactase. Lactase catalyzes the breakdown of lactose, which is a sugar found in milk. The reaction catalyzed by lactase is summarized in figure 3.1. A. Describe the reaction that is catalyzed by lactase. Use figure 3.1 to help you in your answer identify Y and the product Z. So the reaction catalyzed over here is hydrolysis because the glycosidic bond between two monosaccharides is broken down and so you'd need water which would be Y in this case, and product Z is alpha-glucose. B, on a commercial scale, immobilized lactase could be used to produce lactose-free milk. One of the products of the reaction shown in figure 3.1 acts as an inhibitor of lactase. This is an example of product inhibition. So product inhibition would mean one of the products binds on to the active side of the enzyme and prevents formation of enzyme substrate complex, which means that it inhibits the action of enzyme converting the substrate to the product. One, explain why product inhibition is useful in K lactase when lactase is acting as an intracellular enzyme, but can be a disadvantage when extracted lactase is used free in solution for the production of lactose-free milk. Activity of all intracellular enzymes should be limited to prevent damage to the cell. And so product inhibition is useful for that in a cell where it prevents the product accumulating and causing damage. 
So if lactase is not inhibited, it would continue catalyzing its reaction and it would continue forming glucose, too much of which can damage a cell. In milk processing, however, to form lactose-free milk, inhibition of enzyme would contaminate milk with lactose as it won't be broken down. To suggest how using immobilized lactase for the production of lactose-free milk helps to reduce the problem of product inhibition. Product inhibition can only occur if the product is allowed to come into contact with the enzyme, whereas using an immobilized enzyme, milk passes over beads of enzyme and it flows over the beads. So the product does not remain in contact with the enzyme and it's collected right after production and therefore it is not able to bind with enzyme to act as an inhibitor in the first place. Three, the first large-scale production of lactose-free milk with an immobilized enzyme used lactase trapped in cellulose tricitate fibers. So just one feature of cellulose tricitate that makes it useful as an immobilizing material. In this answer, you need to write a feature that makes um, cellulose tricitate good at its job, which is keeping enzyme fixed in a certain position and not letting it mix with the product. And that's aided by the fact that the enzyme is not able to escape cellulose triacetate because it does not digest it. So cellulose triacetate is not digested by lactose, which is how it keeps the enzyme bound. C. When developing an enzyme-catalyzed reaction for use in industry, the progress of reaction is studied. The progress of reaction is essentially how the rate of production of product changes with time. Outline how the progress of an enzyme catalyzed reaction can be investigated experimentally. To carry out this experiment, you need to observe the dependent and the independent variables. For the independent variables, you need to change any factor that affects the um, enzyme activity which you are going to test, for example, pH, temperature. And for the dependent variable, you'd observe the time taken for appearance of product or disappearance of reactant. And then for the third point, you can plot a graph with time on the x-axis and the product concentration on the y-axis. For figure 4.1 is a diagram of a section through part of a young root. A. Describe the pathways by which water passes from soil to the cells of cortex shown in figure 4.1. So water has to move from the soil into the cells of the cortex. Movement of water is carried out by osmosis. And as this question is of four marks, you will need to describe the two ways of osmosis which are covered in the syllabus. And those would be apoplast and symplast pathway, where apoplast pathway includes movement of water uh, by seeping across cell walls of cells without entering the cells. And symplast pathway would include movement of cells across these through the cytoplasms and crossing plasmodes matter. B. Figure 4.1 shows the location where mineral lines in the soil, soil enter the plant. There is a greater density of mitochondria in cell X than in the cells of root cortex. With reference to the uptake and transport of mineral ions, suggest why there is a greater density of mitochondria in cell X than in cells of root cortex. So X, cell X needs to uh, take up ions from the soil against their concentration gradient by active transport. And this requires energy that will be provided by mitochondria, whereas root cortex cells do not need to do that, so they have fewer mitochondria. Five A: the sinoatrial node and the atrioventricular node are two regions of the heart. Explain the role of sinoatrial node and the role of atrioventricular node in the cardiac cycle. Sinoatrial node sends out excitation waves acting as pacemaker, so it is setting up the speed of contractions of the cardiac muscles during the cycle. And the atrioventricular node is a band of conducting fibers between atria and ventricles that relays the impulse to ventricles after um, delaying it for a 0.1 second.
B figure 5.1 shows features that are observed in transverse sections of three types of blood vessels. One complete figure 5.1 by stating the type of blood vessels indicated by D, E, and F. Starting off, we have blood vessels we have with three layers. And the first one, D, has a thin wall relative to lumen di diameter, that would be vein. And a vessel with thick wall relative to lumen diameter would be an artery. And a blood vessel with a wall of a single layer would be a capillary. Two, the inner layer of walls of D and E is composed of endothelial tissue. List two structural features of endothelial tissue. Endothelial tissue has an uh, has a smooth surface, which reduces resistance to flow of blood, and it is uh, only one cell thick. Six in a dividing cell, DNA replication occurs before mitosis. A steps in DNA replication are outlined in Figure 6.1. Complete Figure 6.1 by filling in the gaps using the most appropriate terms. One helicase enzyme allows DNA double, hel double helix to unwind and hydrogen bonds between the two strands to break down, exposing the four bases A, T, C, and G. And you're supposed to name these bases. So A is adenine. D is thymine, C is cytosine, G is guanine. To an enzyme molecule attaches itself attaches to each of the two separated parental strands. The two enzyme molecules move in opposite directions, each catalyzing the formation of a new strand. The enzyme is known as um, this enzyme is going to be DNA polymerase because uh, it adds complementary nucleotide to a growing strand, which means that uh, for each of the two strands, you need separate enzyme, and that would be DNA polymerase as it adds nucleotides to the growing strand in a 5 to 3 prime direction. 3. DNA dash the monomers of DNA. So the monomers of DNA are DNA nucleotides. 4. The bases of the DNA monomers from hydrogen bonds with the bases on each separated parental strands of DNA according to the rules of uh, complementary base pairing because hydrogen bonds only form between bases that are complementary to each other. 5. One strand is synthesized continuously and the other is synthesized in sections known as Okazaki fragments. The fragments are joined by an enzyme called DASH which catalyzes the formation of phosphodiester bonds. Phosphodiester bonds are formed by DNA ligase enzyme. 6. The, the result of application is to two DNA molecules, each one containing an original parental strand and a new synthesized strand. This type of replication is described as semi-conservative replication. B figure 6.2 is a photomicrograph of root tip cells at different stages in the cell cycle. A cell in interface is labeled. One figure complete figure 6.2 by naming the stages of mitosis in each of the cells in J, K, and L in figure 6.2. J is quite apparently mitosis as the chromatids are lined up along the equator. Whereas K is a prophase, as you can see, condensed chromosomes, and L is telophase. You might think of it as anaphase, but you'd, you'd be able to see this faint line between the two nuclei, indicating the division of cytoplasm, which means L has to be telophase. To state one feature of the cell in interphase visible in figure 6.2 that shows that this cell is not in early interphase. So this cell over here is a large cell and a cell which uh, in early interface would mean a cell in a G1 phase going through the growth process and so it would not be as large as this cell and therefore we can tell that the cell is not in the early interface. In this answer you might be tempted to write that the two sets of chromosomes are visible which are the reason of the cell being in late interface. But remember that although there are two sets of DNA in late interface after S phase has completed, they are only, they are only visible when chromatin condense in prophase of mitosis. And that comes after even late interface. So they wouldn't be visible until uh, prophase. We describe the stages of mitosis shown in cell J. So the 
chromatids are lined up along the equator of the spindle and they are ancestor chromatids are joined together at the centromere. And so this is it. We are done with this paper. Thank you for watching.